Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and we're back with SAT score. And today we'll be covering our recommended tier eight and nine doubloon ships you can currently get in the armory. Now, in our previous uh, coal ships video where we we did a recommended list, we will only be talking about the ships that will be um, that we're recommending uh, due to the numerous tier eight ships available. We're only going to be covering the ships we recommend for purchase as we've previously covered most of the tier 9 ships uh, you can refer to the recommended tier 9 and 10 coal ships video for more information uh, regarding these ships that are um, available for coal so now let's get started now for the first ship we're going over for the tier 9 is the uh, actually the only one we'd recommend for buying for doubloons is uh the Gronigan. now the Gronigan is available for 19,300 doubloons or 1 million free XP. It is a Netherlands tier 9 DD uh, with, with a DD smoke farming uh, ship with hydro and no torps. Harder to use than other DDs, but average skill ceiling. It's good in randoms, average in ranked, and mediocre in CBs. It's recommended for a good damage farming DD. Now, I'd also recommend, since this ship is available for 1 million free XP, instead of buying it, you can get it for the 1 million free XP instead. Highly recommend doing that rather than spending 19,300 balloons on it. But if you are just wanting to get uh, this ship right away, you can spend the 19,300 balloons immediately. Now, we're going to be looking at the Tier 8 um, the balloon ships. I will be covering the battleships and cruisers well sat score will be covering the crew uh dds and cvs so there are 35 tier 8 doubloon ships in the armory so we're only covering the ones that are recommended i'm just going to repeat myself on that just so you guys know we're only going over the ones they'd recommend uh so let's get started so for the battleships uh the first one would be the roma the Roma costs 13,400 doubloons. Um, now, we'd also recommend this ship uh, for credit farming. And to be able to do this, you have to buy the 7,000 uh, doubloon, uh, doubloon camo, which is the Kobayashi camo. We'll go on that in a little bit, a few seconds. It's this this is a tier rate Italian BB, uh, standard BB playstyle, trolley dispersion, but good hole handling. It does not have sap nor fuel smoke. It's easy to play, but and also relatively easy to master as well. It is mediocre in randoms, ranked, and CBs. I, it's recommended for its credit farming, which we just talked about. Um, but you do have to buy the 7,000 uh, doubloon Kobayashi camo, which would raise this price to about 20,400 doubloons um, to be able to make this into a credit farming ship. Now, if you do buy the camo along with this, the ship will be the, it will then become the second best farming, uh, credit farming ship in the game, along with the key, which we'll be talking about next. And so and with this cost, it'll bring it to the cost of a tier nine ship. And the only thing that beats this thing on credit farming is the unnerfed Missouri. So I would highly recommend this ship and the camo for credit farming, also would recommend it as well just as a battleship. Now, the next ship we're recommending is the Key. Now, the Key costs 13,200 doubloons. It is a Tier 8 IGN BB. It's very similar to the playstyle of the Amagi, but has a 10 kilometer torps with rearward arcs. It's easy to play and about average mastery. It's above average in randoms, average in rank, and mediocre in CBs. Now, we'd also recommend this ship for credit farming, just like the Roma. You, you have to buy the 7,000 doubloon Kobayashi camo, which would raise the price to about 20,200 doubloons. So, this would bring the price to around tier 9, uh, tier 9 uh, battle, uh, tier 9 ship. Now, we would recommend, if you're looking for just a credit farming ship, we would recommend the key over the Roma due to the key's superior performance. Now, for the next tier 8 battleship we're looking at is going to be 
the Terpes. The Terpes costs 12,800 doubloons, is a tier 8 German battleship, very similar playstyle to the Bismarck, but carries close range torpedoes instead of hydro. It is the best BB in a point blank brawl due to its torpedoes, easy to play, somewhat hard to master due to the timing of the push. Average in randoms, above average in ranks, and has potential in CBs. Uh, it's a recommended for a classic brawling BB for like that good old brawl. Now the next tier 8 battleship we'll be looking at is the, is the Constellation. Now the Constellation is a tier 8 US BB, or it's better known as a battle cruiser. Uh, it's fairly unique playstyle, very mobile with BB caliber guns. It has 9.2 kilometer torps and a 10 kilometer radar. It's some. It has poor armor protection and a limited main battery range. It's somewhat hard to play, hard to master due to the unique play style and poor armor. Now it does have above average performance in randoms ranked, but unlike and but unlikely to be seen in CBs. It is recommended for a good and unique play style, but also challenging ship to play. If you do get this ship, I highly recommend you play this ship and you think of it as a cruiser. If you think about it as a cruiser, it's a lot easier for you to be able to play this because if you try to play this like a battleship, it is not going to go well for you. Now, the next you'll be looking at is going to be the Alabama. The Alabama costs 12,500 doubloons is a tier 8 US BB, very similar to the North Cal, but it is better maneuverability and torque protection, but less, ac uh, less accurate main guns. It's easy to play, easy to master, above average impact and randoms, average in ranked, but not a good CB ship. It is recommended for a solid BB and US Captain Retrainer. Very good in that regards. Now we're gonna look at the R recommended tier eight cruisers. So the tier eight cruisers we start recommending uh, will be the Iran. Now the Iran costs 11,800 doubloons, is a tier eight pan Asian cruiser. It is a kiting cruiser, similar to the Russian light cruiser line. It carries Yu Yang uh, deep water torpedoes instead of radar also has torpedo reload boost on this thing as well uh it is average difficulty but relatively easy to master above average impact and randoms poor ship in ranked not good in cbs recommended for a powerful kiting ship now the next ship we'll be recommending uh would be the rochester now the rochester is a recent uh release to world of warships uh, some of you may not know of it. It does cost 11,300 doubloons. Is a tier 8 US uh, cruiser. Similar to Baltimore. But has smoke instead of a radar. It is average difficulty. Good in randoms. Mediocre in ranked in CBs. Uh, it's recommended for a good smoke cruiser. If you'd like to see more information on this ship. You can look at one of my previous videos. I do have a review video on this ship. You can just take a look if you are interested in more on this ship. Now, the next ship we would recommend uh, would be the Bayard. Now, the Bayard has been around for a long time. It is it costs 11,300 doubloons. It is a tier 8 French cruiser. Essentially, a light cruiser version of the Charles Maltel. Higher HE firepower, but worse durability. It's difficult to play due to floaty shells and a fragile hole. It's good in randoms, okay in ranked, has potential in CBs. It's recommended for a challenging but good damage farming cruiser. Now the next one is one of my personal favorites from this list, is the mains. The mains cost 11,300 doubloons, is a tier eight German cruiser has high dpm light cruiser with a very high he pen uh superior to most cruiser he pens at this tier uh somewhat difficult to do to poor armor but average skill ceiling with amazing damage farming potential powerful in ranked 
okay, oh, sorry. Okay in ranked, powerful in randoms, but it's too fragile for CBs. Highly recommended for a powerful damage farming cruiser. Also a very nice crew trainer as well. Now the final cruiser we'll be looking at uh, for the tier 8 uh, premium doubloons would be the Otago. The Otago costs 11,000 doubloons, is a tier 8 IGN cruiser. It's a typical Japanese cruiser, but with heels and different torpedo angles. Its citadel is fairly vulnerable. Average difficulty due to its vulnerable citadel, but somewhat hard to master. Very good in randoms, above average in randoms, but viable for CBs as well. Highly recommended for a durable, uh, durable all-around uh, kiting ship. Now we're going to lead it off to SAT score, who will be going over the Tier 8 uh, recommended DDs and CVs. Alright, so I'll start things off with the USS Kid. She costs 9,400 doubloons. She is a US uh, Tier 8 destroyer. For those who are familiar with how Benson and Fletcher handles, she will feel very, very similar. The main difference between Kid and Benson is that she carries heals, a little bit more AA, but suffers in the torpedo department, with one less torpedo rack. Uh, she's, so, she's somewhat average in terms of difficulty. Her skill ceiling is somewhat high, as she can be used as a support destroyer, and she has excellent destroy killing potential. I've seen a lot of uh, Kid players just kind of uh, expend their ship without using all their heal charges. She is a very good destroyer in randoms and ranked due to her anti-destroyer potential, and she is powerful in tier 8 clan battles as she is one of the few destroyers with, with heals. Uh, I would recommend her if you want a either a good support ship, or you want a destroyer to fight other destroyers, or a destroyer that can fight is a little bit better against carriers than others. Next will be the Cossack. She caught, she's a little bit more expensive at 9,900 doubloons. She's actually pretty similar to Lightning. She has excellent concealment, pretty good fun, uh, very good gunfire power, but only has one torpedo rack. Uh, she also she carries the standard Hydro as you would see on the British destroyers, and she has the same smokes and and uh, uniquely a engine boost. She is somewhat easy to use but hard to master but due to her floaty shells and she isn't as effective against uh, cruisers however however despite this she is very good in randoms and especially powerful in ranked as she just wreaks havocs on uh, other destroyers um, she's also good in tier 8 clan battles because of this and so if you want a, a very good all-round uh, des uh, destroyer go ahead you can look no further than kozak if in a toss-up between Kid and Cossack, I'd probably lean a little bit more towards Cossack, but both of these are highly, uh, very powerful, so you can't go wrong with either. Then we will go on to the Li Terrible. 9,800 doubloons. She is very similar to the Le Fantasque and, by extension, the French Destroyer playstyle. She has faster reload on her guns, but her but slightly worse concealment and torpedoes. In this way, she can be seen as more of a pure gunboat. Uh, she's fairly hard to use and hard to master because of that lack of smoke. She has to rely completely on dodging enemy shells in order to remain effective. But if you can master her, she will prove to be an excellent destroyer in randoms and in ranked. She does have uh, potential in clan battles with the right team setup, if we ever get another tier 8 clan battle season. Uh, she, I would recommend her if you want a good destroyer, a good destroyer gunboat. And for our final destroyer, we have the Lo Yang. She's actually one of the cheaper options at 8,300 doubloons. And she will also have a B version coming up in the Black Friday sale. Um, at least that's, uh, at least according to uh, what people have been saying in the Reddit. Uh, she is similar to the Hisen Yang, carrying 5.5 kilometer hydro, but um, 
but in compensation, she has weaker gunfire power, sim uh, same as the Hiss and Yang, and she can mount two types of torpedoes. Either she can get the long range but weak torpedoes, similar to the Mahan, or powerful 6.7 kilometer torps, but a very short range. Uh, because uh, she uh, she's a bit better as a support ship or an area lockdown ship. Like, she can lock down entire camps with her hydro, or she can provide smoke and hydro for her cruiser teammates so they can farm at safety. She carries, uh, by the way, she carries the U.S. smoke instead of the pan-Asian smoke. Um, because of this, she's kind of, uh, she has average difficulty in randoms. She's good in ranked because of her support combination, and she occupies a powerful niche for tier 8 clan battles, although we haven't seen too many people too many teams sent her to use around her. I would recommend her if you want a good support destroyer, or you want a destroyer to focus more on objective controls as opposed to damage farming. And with that, we will cover uh, the final ships here. We have two CVs that we'll recommend at tier 8. First is one of the newest, uh, newest additions to the armory, the Chekhalov. 12,300 doubloons, she has a fire, she is a fairly unique carrier loadout. She's similar to the Russian carriers as they carry skip bombs and torpedo bombers with the same ha general handling. But what makes her unique is that she has HE dive bombers instead of rockets. And those HE dive bombers are actually similar to the other carriers in terms of usage. Of course, uh, she carries this uh, typical Russian CV gimmicks. She will strike with all of her squad, all of the planes at once. But a loss of plane will also mean a loss in strike power. They're also relatively slow. Um, they, but overall, she is an excellent strike CV. She can have very good damage output, but if you, uh, if you don't play her correctly, you can lose a lot of planes to AA, and uh, they're pretty slow overall. And because of this, she's a fairly high skill floor and ceiling for her carrier. But she is very rewarding, as she is good in randoms, very powerful in ranked, and she has potential to be an excellent clan, excellent carrier in clan battles. And so we would recommend her for carrier mains who want a good carrier to use. The final one is going to be Kaga. Kaga costs eleven thousand three hundred doubloons. Uh, she has uh, her her specialty is hard hitting torpedo bombers. Uh, she carries a torpedo bomber that launches four torps at once and can launch usually launch two strikes at an enemy, sometimes three. Uh, however, she has relatively weak rockets and HE dive bombers to compensate. Her other gimmick is that she has large hangar sizes, carrying a lot of aircraft. So you can constantly throw aircraft at your enemy and still not run out, uh, even into the late game. She, because of this, she is more effective against battleships and larger cruisers, but she will somewhat struggle with destroyers because of her lack of effective ordnance. Uh, she's somewhat easy to use, but she does have a high skill ceiling as, I ex as you have to focus more on the larger ships. You, have, you will have some difficulty trying to strike destroyers. She is pretty good in randoms. Uh, for ranked, I find her to be too matchmaking dependent to give you a definite answer. So, like, she will do well in a uh, battleship heavy meta, but if for some reason there are five destroyers on the team, then you're going to wish you brought a Lexington instead. In clan battles, due to the due to the destroyer heavy composition, she's unlikely to be a, a very good carrier. But still, I would recommend her for CV mains who like to play randoms. Uh, Bo, do you have anything else to add? Nope, that will be it. Thank you so much for your time, SAT score. I greatly appreciate it, brother. If you guys have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Uh, we will be doing a, another video coming soon on the tier 7 and below doubloon ships we would recommend. So definitely be checking out for that. But, yep, this is Overlord Bo, and I'll talk to y'all later.